I'm a man. You're going from L.A. this week to Dallas next week. Obviously, first things first, Jamel Charlo against Austin Trout. How's camp been, man? How's everything been running? You know, camp's been really good, man. He's worked really hard. Um, been very focused. You know, um, you know, working very hard. Working down with Arrow. Sparring with Arrow was really good. And I think that, 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 that helps Rise and take his game to the next level. And uh, he's done really well. Everything is great. And I know Austin Trout hasn't had the best of luck lately, but he's lost to all formidable guys. Um, he's a durable, rangy southpaw, 35-fight vet. I'm sure this isn't a fight you guys took lightly. No, I mean, I, I, and first of all, you have to respect it. And every one of the guys who were considered formidable, he, they barely beat him. Yeah. I mean, with, with, the, with, with the, the fight he had with uh, Jared Hurd, he was winning up until, you know, a certain point in the fight. So, you have to take him very seriously. And I think that I take him very serious. I think that uh, with him being... Uh, you know, this could possibly be his last chance. He's going to come out, you know, all gunslinging. I have to anticipate that. I have to imagine that's that's the one we're going to see. And I believe that the guy to beat Cotto could come up, show up. So that's my thoughts. I have to go in there focus and look, expecting the best uh, Austin Trout there is. Um, being that they're twin brothers, I don't know if you feel like fighting style-wise they're comparable, but... Has Jamal gotten uh, Jamel gotten any advice from Jamal, being that Jamal's been there with him? Have you watched the fight with Jamal and Austin Trout, or are you kind of going on a different path and a in a different game plan with Jamel? Well, I mean, he's probably giving him some, some you know some recommendations. You know, being a fighter that makes you you know a trainer, you know, so you know he's probably giving him some advice from his brother, and uh, you know, I, I work with him. I, I never really watched. Trout at his worst. Mm -hmm. I watched him when he fought against uh, Jamal, right? I watched him when he fought a little against her, but I watched him when he fought Cotto. Even though it was long ago, you want to go in there and expect the best guy. I got you. That guy at his best. One day to see him at his best and, and, and see what to expect. Never never expect what, you know, oh, you're doing this wrong, that wrong. I don't want to, hey, listen, you're going there looking for the guy to be the best, and that's what I'm expecting. I'm sure this wasn't by design, but this is Jamel's third uh, consecutive southpaw, man. Um, being that he's fighting, uh, he's sparring with Errol Spence, one of the best southpaws out there. I'm, I'm sure that that's helped tremendously. Yeah, yeah, it has helped a lot. I mean, you know, it's two different styles. You know, uh, every every one of the guys before that different style than Errol, but but Errol very very um, he can fight different styles, different ways. He moves around. He boxes, he slips, he's in and out. He does a lot of different things. Even though you don't see it in the fights, he, he does it in the gym. <laughs> so, but um, it, it's very good for him, man. You know, um, with the power that Arrow has, it makes him more focused. So with that being said, he takes that same focus into a fight with a guy, you know, with everybody else. And uh, I think that's the key element to it. As a trainer, man, you can only hope for um, steady improvements. When you first got with him, obviously he went from eight round kill with Jackson, six round kill with Hatley, first round kill with Lubin. Not putting everything on the actual knockout, but we've steadily seen improvements in Jamel. As a trainer, you have to be you have to be happy with that kind of progression. Well, you know, I, I'm happy with the fact that he's getting what I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. I'm, I don't think about the way he gets the victory. I just care that he gets the victory. You know. Uh, I like him to look good doing it, but you know, uh, whether it's a knockout or not, I don't know. It's not really my big emphasis, you know, my big focus. I just care that he wins and he's successful and he looks good doing it. That's my key um, thing that I care about. But I am proud and happy the fact that he's constantly growing and getting what I'm working on. And it's funny because when I watched him spark the last day's sport with Errol, and he was doing some of the things. Exactly as I take teach and exactly as Arrow was doing, so it's kind of funny to watch and have me smile. So yes, I am happy. And although you don't put a lot of emphasis on the knockout, it is you know it's clear as day that he's sitting down on things more. He's punching with more power. Definitely since he's been with you, um, is that one of the teachings? Because he's he's been so successful with it, or are you teaching things that just so happens um, brings his power out? Well, you know, I I, I don't. 
I teach what I teach, but at the same time, I teach what he something that fit within his game plan and strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And what he he could do already is athleticism and physical power and things like that. So I teach rotation. I teach him how to, um, you know, not necessarily sit on the punch, but rotate on the punch. Put I got his you. Whole body by the punch. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. That's how he gets knocked out. Even though my focus and emphasis is not knockouts, but the punches that we practice and the way we throw the punches actually gets knockouts. So it's not like I'm saying, go get it, go knock him out. But at the same time, those shots that we practice, those shots we throw, the way he turns his body, puts his body on the punch, they actually do get knocked out. It's funny, and we talked about this before, DJ. Um, two different personalities, two different kind of styles mentally in Errol and, and Jermail. You say you love Jermail's outgoing and outspoken kind of personality. He hasn't been shy about that at all leading up to this fight. Is that something that you, you in, not encourage so much, but you still enjoy that he's so vocal? Well, I never, I never encourage it, right? Because I, I'm really, I, I enjoy, and not enjoyed in the fact that been out speaking, whatever, but I, I enjoy the fact that he believes in himself. Uh -huh. So that's what I'm I'm impressed with that 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 gives me energy, right? Is that he believes in himself and he believes in what I've been teaching. Just like when I'm at a fight and I and Errol's there and he says whatever he says, well, okay, you know, it's like so I love to see them the guys believe in themselves. And you know that that's first and foremost the personality and the persona. So it wasn't necessarily about the skills, because I, when I saw the video, so much about the clarity of that is that it wasn't. He just said he said superstar. So, and if you think about this, Floyd Mayweather wasn't Floyd Mayweather until he became Money Mayweather. So he adapted to some person. So you have a busy couple but weeks coming up, man. I'm not gonna hold you. Anything before I let you go, DJ? We want to be like the Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns. But you don't have to talk a lot. You just go out there and do the work, do the job. And this is a great fight. This fight, if, like I said, if this guy can take it, you see how great Errol Smith is. Send the best Austin there is that, that I can imagine to be in um, fans. Just keep tuning in. It's going to be a great fight.